Well, in all the hubbub surrounding Malcolm and Universal Hollywood's Halloween Horror Nights, we have been neglecting Orlando until now. So, I'm going to throw out a couple of things based upon some tweets that came out yesterday. Now, it looks like there's going to be a lot of Horror Nights content very soon because we've already started crazily uh, trying to dissect Malcolm. And I've done several videos about it, and so have the other Horror Nights updaters. So, I think that we're going to talk a little Orlando today. Now, the first thing was the fact that Mike Aiello started tweeting, just confirmed one of the mazes just two hours ago. This one? Oh yes, this one. Unbelievable. Now, right after that, this is one of those dream properties. The characters involved are epic. Very excited for the team, and of course the fans. Now, there was actually a message that was posted from Mystic Freak on Twitter asking, hints, hints, something's beside, it's a maze. So Michaelo says, it's indoors. So does that mean it's in either a soundstage, a sprung tent, or the parade building? Or does that mean that the actual events inside the house take place indoors? That is the question. Now, on top of this, he just simply said, all good things. Hmm, I wonder. This is one of those, man, wouldn't it be cool if, nah, there's no way, what, we got it? One of those type of moments. Then the elation of the we got it moment turns into pure terror of now having to live up to it. Same emotion as in American Werewolf in London. So this was all listed. And there's a couple of ways you can look at it. Obviously, this is a big property. Now, the question is, is this potentially connecting to Malcolm? It's possible, and I think it is a good, mm, maybe a 50% chance. I know that's not good odds, but there is maybe a 50% chance it possibly could connect to Malcolm or it could connect to a share with Hollywood. Now, there are rumors right now we're getting at least two shared IPs between Orlando and Hollywood. Now, we don't know if this is true or not, we just know what we've heard so far. Now, the thing about it is, is of course Malcolm is a big property, a huge monumental property. But then again, there's a second maze that's on the table now that John Murdy is tweeting about and hasn't really mentioned anything yet. But he did sort of leave something out the other day that was rather unique. Now, he was chatting on Twitter with myself and Charles from Designing the Fear. And during this, he actually tweeted something, just walked in the front door, found this. There was a picture of a squid tent tentacle, that's a hard word to say sometimes, a squirrel puppet, baby wipes, and a stethoscope. Is this a hint? Question mark. Well, the first thing that pops into people's heads immediately is the fact that I'll give it up to Charles for coming up with this being a potential HP Lovecraft house. Shared obviously between Hollywood and Orlando. 2010, they wanted to do Lovecraft in Orlando. Didn't really work out like they wanted it to. But I'm sure the concept is there enough that they could just drag it out of some... Uh, dust and just put it back on the table again to be an option. Do I think this is H.P. Lovecraft? It easily could be. Everything kind of fits, except for one thing. The squirrel doesn't really fit. And someone uh, named Sway 52 on Twitter said, all I can discern is Dr. Squid Squirrel. That can't be right. Murdy tweets him back and says, could be. So when you put the words doctor, a squid, and a squirrel together, you come up with a major IP that I know would be a share between Orlando and Hollywood, given the fact that it has been proven in American Werewolf last year that 
There was something that was there. There was kind of a blue police box that might have had some things on it, but obviously they couldn't do that because they didn't have the rights. But I would say if there was an option on the table, Orlando would jump at it in a heartbeat. Ayala would be all on top of this. Do I think that this is a cryptic comment to equal out to another IP that's not HP Lovecraft? Potentially. What I think is something that when I typed all this stuff into Google, I came up with an IP that connects all of the things together, and that is Doctor Who. So, obviously, we've already seen some, not exact, but some versions of Doctor Who creations in Halloween Horror Nights Past. And I know that it would be a jump on immediately if it was on the table. Now, this is a major IP that would bring in fans from the series, from the beginning, all the way to now and into the future. Now, if you thought that the crowds for The Walking Dead were horrendous, could you imagine if Doctor Who came to Halloween Horror Nights? I can. And I think there's enough monsters in the Whovian universe that actually can make a very intense, very successful haunted house in Orlando or a haunted maze in uh, Hollywood. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. Could this be another red herring? Could this be all part of the work? Well, John Murdy went on to say a couple of more things and said, you know, it's an experiment in horror and it will last 24 hours. I'll explain it on Saturday night. Well, obviously it's Saturday night, it's 9 p.m., which means that it is 6 o'clock uh, Pacific time, which means that obviously it's not late enough for Mr. Murdy yet, so nothing has been revealed as of this moment. So right now, this is basically what we know. So it sounds to me like there is a possibility this will be a share. Now, this is Maze 2 that we're talking about here. And Maze 1 and Maze 2 might just be a share between Hollywood and Orlando. We don't know this. Maze 2, John Murdy, the only thing he has said so far is, this is a maze that fans will freak out about. And he was very confident they were going to get it. Well, it was pitched and it was locked in. He's finishing up the treatment this weekend, given the fact it is... Saturday now, he says, I'm expecting some good news any second. He says, right after this, remember when I told you there was a property I was chasing that would make fans totally freak out? Prepare to freak out. Happy Friday. That was posted yesterday. Right after this, it would say, sorry that last tweet was cryptic as hell. All will be revealed in time. Trust me, you're going to freak out. All caps. Stay tuned. Hashtag Carney. So here's the thing. There are several properties that could make Halloween Horror Nights fanatics freak out. And Malcolm aside, maybe, just maybe, like I said before, I said Malcolm is The Shining. And there are reasons to believe that Malcolm could be Halloween. Or there are reasons to believe Malcolm could be Ghostbusters. And, you know... I wouldn't have an issue with any of these things. They would be awesome. But, I think that we're looking at two, two major IPs coming to the event this year. Whether it's a share for Hollywood and Orlando, where one's Hollywood and one's Orlando, all that aside, we know that something big is coming. What's on the table? Well, here's the question. And... Mike Aiello was tweeting about some horror films that are now going to be on Netflix. And there's some interesting ones on here. Now we have Ghostbusters 2. Hmm, I wonder why that's on there. The Nightmare on Elm Street 2. I don't think Freddy's coming back. Not for a bit. Uh, it'll probably eventually, but not yet. Silence of the Lambs. I like to see it. We've had it in a, in a house before, but not a house devoted to it. And given the fact that Hannibal is an NBC Universal property, why not try to find a way to bring The Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon and Hannibal themselves 
to Halloween Horror Nights. I'd love to see Hannibal Lecter in a Halloween Horror Nights maze, and a one devoted to him himself, obviously, and all the craziness that surrounds him. So this is really interesting. Now, this could also be a red herring, or just L.O.'s like marking out for the movies that are going to be on Netflix. It doesn't necessarily have to be a clue. It could be a clue, but it doesn't have to be a clue. What's on the table right now? What would make Halloween Horror Nights fanatics mark out that seems to be unattainable? Okay, first off, we have Stephen King. Stephen King, in any way possible, has been known to be unattainable. Now, in the past, Stephen King has not wanted any of his properties to be used in association with a Halloween Horror Nights or a horror event, period. Now, apparently there was a Q&A recently, and... This was a mentioned on my boy Psycho Masker Films video recently, and he basically said something about King was asked point blank by somebody who was a fan of Halloween Horror Nights if he's ever been asked about letting his properties come to the event. He ducked the question, made a small joke, and went on. So maybe, just maybe, Something has finally happened in order to make Stephen King agree to have his properties be used at Halloween Horror Nights. And maybe 2014 is the year that it begins. And if that's the case, I think we're in for many years of King to come. Now, sorry, my throat gets parched. The thing you have to look at here, anything involving King would be a mark out. Obviously, King Greatest Hits, Greatest Hits House would be phenomenal. I talked about The Shining. Now, obviously, we're throwing out The Exorcist now, which is another big monster property that everybody wants. I know Hellraiser's probably on the table. Mike did end up going to uh, making a UK stop recently, so maybe, just maybe, he was talking to people about bringing Hellraiser to the event. Or, like I said, Doctor Who... Maybe something was involving that. But then again, that could have been just for Harry Potter. It's possible. Anything's possible. Because given the fact that before Hate to Fly gave up his spot on the Orlando United Forums, he said something rather cryptic that says Diagon Alley is just the beginning. Which means we're getting a lot more than just this Diagon Alley expansion as it pertains to Harry Potter. I think that we're going to see a Harry Potter hotel somewhere in the next... 10 years, if I had to guess. I think that that's probably a good idea, because that's a property Universal doesn't have to lease out or anything like that, and they don't have to worry about paying anybody for the rights. That's the reason why you haven't seen Marvel characters inside any of the parks, as in the hotels, given the fact that Marvel is owned by Disney now. So, that's the reason why that Thor, who has not been used as a walk-around character at Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure, mostly Islands of Adventure, will soon be coming to Hollywood Studios. And that's what I'm hearing, and I know that's going to be the case. Obviously, they started to use Captain America over at Disneyland, and they can use that because on the West Coast, Universal doesn't have a contract with Marvel. Now, on this coast, obviously, there is a contract with Marvel, so that's the reason why it's not as easy. There's a little bit more red tape to cut through. Now... Another thing that said, basically, a property that everybody wants would be Alien. Alien is a big deal. Alien would be a big deal, and it would be an awesome house and an awesome maze, depending on which coaster on. It doesn't matter. It still would be phenomenal. Something that they'd have to worry about getting perfect to not upset the fans. Now, <coughs> excuse me. There's other things we have on the table. I think Poltergeist is on the table. But I think Poltergeist will be next year, if anything, because Poltergeist is actually being re re uh, doing a remake next year, actually. So I think that that's probably the right direction you're going with that. I know all the fans talk about Trick or Treat. I think Trick or Treat will come eventually, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. As an Alfred Hitchcock Greatest Hits house that I would like to see. I think that's going to be a major property, but I think there's a lot more red tape than uh, people anticipate with that one. Sorry about that. So, that's a big deal. You don't really worry about the slashers or anything because we've already done that. One major property I want to see in Orlando for a specific house would be one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and that is Scream. 
I really would like to see how they would do a Scream house in Orlando, and I think it would work really well. I know that Terror Tram happened in Hollywood, and they had a house in Hollywood, but they never really did Scream here in Orlando. So, I mean, he was... Obviously, Ghostface was part of a house, but I mean, a house devoted to him and him alone. That would be awesome. Obviously, another thing that jumps out immediately, the big property, is, like I said, Halloween. And I think that there is a possibility, if Malcolm is a red herring, and Malcolm is Halloween, which I said Malcolm is the Shining, Malcolm could be the Shining, Malcolm could be Halloween, Malcolm could be Ghostbusters. Now, if this is Halloween... Here's what I think will happen. The, life's, the Life and Crimes of Michael Myers' house has already been in Hollywood. Obviously, Murdy has a connection to the music way of thinking. So, I think what would happen in this case, I think that would make a shared IP. But not exactly. And it's funny because I actually tweeted them about it and he said, I like your ideas, but you're... He basically told me I was kind of on the right track, but not exactly. That makes me think that there's a possibility this could be the case. What I think would happen in this case would be that Hollywood would get Rob Zombie's Halloween. And we in Orlando would get John Carpenter's Halloween. So it's a shared IP, but not exactly. Plays into what they told me. Makes sense, right? Ghostbusters. Something that would make people freak out. Literally freak out. Eyes bug out. I mean, it happened in the movie. And so much content you could have in a Ghostbusters house. You could go from the first movie, the second movie, you could even do original things all together. And it would be a phenomenal house, and I know it would work really well. And I think the words freak out being thrown out like that may possibly mean that Malcolm might be Ghostbusters. Now, <clears throat> I'm not second-guessing myself. I'm thinking that there's a possibility of all of these. Now, obviously another, I can't say a freak-out property would be American Horror Story, but it's not something that's going to be the freak-out property. I think that American Horror Story probably will come, if it's not this year, probably next year. I think it will come soon. If it doesn't come this year, it will come next year. I think that the smart thing to do would be to hold off on Insidious and the Conjuring. Insidious has another Part 3 coming out, and the Conjuring has Annabelle as well as the Conjuring 2, so wait for that. If they're going to do Sinister, I think that Sinister waits until 2 comes out, at least. So, that's what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking this is actually a possibility. Um, I talked about some of the old-school IPs for horror. I talked about the Lost Boys as a potential uh, clue to Dr. Jimmy's tomato juice that he was talking about, his cryptic comment there. As well as Killer Clowns from Outer Space, some sort of a house or a scare zone. And that'd be a great way to integrate Jack the Clown, which everybody thinks is still going to end up at the event this year. Which, we don't know for sure yet, because nothing more has been said about it. And, like I said, there's a lot of things to talk about. This potential icon of a puppet master of sorts. And talking about fate, and all sorts of things that are on the table right now. I mean, this is really interesting. It's really enjoyable right now, all the things that have been coming down the pike like they have. So, I really look forward to what happens next, to be totally honest. And there's a lot of things that are going on right now. A whole lot of things that are going on right now. And it's awesome that it's March 15th, and we're talking Halloween Horror Nights. And we're not just talking Halloween Horror Nights as in speculation. We're doing that, obviously. We're doing that greatly. And trying to break the code words. But we're talking about facts, too. And this is awesome, we're getting stuff this early. This is really cool right now. I'm really enjoying this, and I'm really enjoying the fact that we have stuff to talk about so early in the event. And I really look forward to opening weekend this year. And the next week, which I'll be at as well. So, real quick before we go, as always, I want to throw a big shout out to the other Horror Nights Updaters. Uh, you can check out Horror Nights Updaters on YouTube. And I recommend doing that. There are a lot of really jam-up people and the other stuff, so uh, check them out if you haven't got a chance to. It's uh, the Red Steel TV. It's UKHHN, Deadly Fear, 1283, Dr. Emmett Brown 1, Mr. Horror Nights, and uh, Psycho Massacre Films, of course. You can also check out videos from... Mm, excuse me. Admiral HHN and... 
A big shout out to, uh, apparently the king of Halloween Horror Nights updaters and cryptic comments in general, the famous Dr. Jimmy. You can check him out, Docimo, on, uh, YouTube. And all the other Horror Nights updaters, uh, shout out to everyone on the, uh, Horror Night Nightmares pages, and as well as the Facebook forums. I flip that around, obviously. Horror Nights forums and, uh... The Facebook uh, groups, all the Facebook pages, so yeah. A lot of interesting information going down, and once I will get any more concrete information, I'm going to shoot those out to you guys as well. So, interesting to see what happens next. So yeah, what's going to happen next? That is the question. That is the question. So as always, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. We are almost at 30,000 views now and 615 subscribers, so yay, we're doing so good. The goal, the goal for 2014 is 1,000 subscribers and at least 50,000 views, so I think that's very doable, and you can help do that and uh, help us get to those numbers if you uh, keep watching this channel. If you want to uh, like us on Facebook, it's Sir Owen Disney Pop. If you'd like to uh, be my friend on Facebook, it's Owen Disney. If you'd like to uh, follow me on Twitter, it's at Sir Owen Disney. Last but certainly not least, if you want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions, ideas you have for Halloween Horror Nights, maze ideas, house ideas, or uh, if you want to uh, contribute to Pop in any way possible, send your videos, send all your uh, correspondence to uh, sirowndisney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.